the title of the session is Returning to the Mother, Coming Home from School. Um, and we're really excited about this final panel. Um, Dan will be moderating. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Sierra. And hello, everybody. Um, as Sierra mentioned, this session is Returning to the Mother, Coming Home from School. Uh, and this will be a session where we interpret this. I imagine each person hears this title and has a different relationship to it, maybe a different relationship to mother, maybe a different relationship to returning, returning home. What does that mean to you? It could relate to food. It could relate to family. It could relate to your work. It could relate to anything. So we really hope that people approach this very personally and from your context. Um, similarly, coming home, what does school mean? It doesn't have to just mean school as we know it. It could be symbolic to you. It could be a look at the systems. Um, so we really want to invite interpretation and uh, people to really approach this from their own point of view. Um, so to enable this before introducing the speakers that are gonna be sharing here. Um, I'll do that after the opening. I want to invite each of us, um, if you haven't already grabbed a pen and paper, uh, to get a pen and paper. And we're going to do a short exercise in poetry, in speed writing. Those of you that were at the Reconnect Fiesta have already done this perhaps. Those of you that attended the poetry sessions on day two and three are also familiar. But for those of you that are new to this, the invitation is to simply write without thinking, to write nonstop without picking up your pen, to enable a free flowing stream of consciousness to unfold through your writing without trying to figure it out, without worrying about being perfect or making mistakes to just write and be open to being surprised at what comes out. Um, so we will do about one minute of speed writing. And the prompt is, what, does, what, what do you hear or what comes up for you when you hear the title, Returning to the Mother, Coming Home from School? That will be our prompt that we'll explore in the speed write. Um, so can I see some thumbs up that people understand, have paper and pen? Okay, lots of thumbs up. Can I see some smiles that people are here with us, present? Lovely, some laughs I'm seeing, or some frowns if you're having a, a more of a sad morning or evening, whatever it might be. It's nice to see you all. Um, okay. So I'll give a countdown from five. And when I reach zero, we will begin our minute. Okay. Five. And could you put the prompt in the chat, please? Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and uh, just quickly, um, I just need to do a translation. Hugo, te veo el mensaje en chat. Hay una traducción a español. Si encuentras abajo interpretación en tu eh, barra de herramientas abajo. Eh, me cuentas en el chat si no, si no encuentras la traducción. Sí, chévere, entendí, ya. Yeah. Pero... Ah, Natalia. Cool. All, all good, Sierra? Okay, okay, so the countdown will begin now. Five, four, three, two, one. And let the writing begin. Five, starting to wrap up your final sentences, final words, final thoughts. And from here, we'll invite a few people to share. If anybody feels inspired, if anybody wants to express what came through, I invite you to unmute and share. We'll just have a few people share before we move through. Arifa. Arifa, you're welcome to share. Hey. 
returning to the mother coming home from school. The day I came home to my mother was the day I returned from school. An alienated space for my being and with no sense of belonging. I moved through the physical corridors of my school building, seeking refuge in the arms of nourishment, and I found myself lost time and time again. Where was I? Why was I here? I do not wish to be a part of this system. I cried deep within as tears streamed down my face. Mm. Mm. Let's show our love for Arifa. Hearts, snaps, maybe claps, maybe wiggles. Appreciate and so beautiful to see the emotion pouring through. Thank you. Next, we'll invite Mu to share. Okay. Um, mother, unborn, open one that gives love returning circular outward whole steeping in the room lots of everything i don't know returning 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 thing that repeats school had experience page like the uh, page the answer home the center the place of beginning mm. home the center the place of beginning wow let's show our love for mu here some hearts some snaps some claps some celebration thank you mu and bertis just a quick reminder for people speaking, there's translation, so please try to speak um, as slowly as you can. Thank you. Meandering the melodies of life, I'll miss notes, hit flat, go up high and way down low. And no matter how far I wander off, I know how to land and come home. Mm. Mm. Wow. Thank you, Bertis. Let's show our love for Bertis. Wow, wow, wow. And last but not least, Judith, please share. Thank your poem. you. <clears throat> Return is the invitation of hope. Amidst the ache and the break of the heart of being lost and being smaller than grass. And yet through the care of strangers and the company of grass, I found my way home. Return is the healing I find in losing myself with the world who has held me close and kept me home. Thank you. Mm, wow. Thank you, Judith. Wow. Oh, part of me wishes we could just make this a poetry session and just continue sharing. There's so many poets in the group, so much beauty in this group. Uh, but another part of me is very excited to introduce the speakers that we've invited to explore this. And uh, just to give you all a heads up, we're going to have about 30 to 40 minutes of uh, informal conversation between Yeo, Wangui, and Karina, who I'll invite shortly. And following that, we'll have about 20 minutes for the whole group to share what's coming through. Um, if people are impacted or people have, you know, really deep touching stories that they want to share or questions, we'll have about 20 minutes after the conversation for the whole group to share. Um, so first I'm going to uh, invite each of the speakers and, and share a little bit uh, of an introduction. Um, first, I'd like to invite Karina and Karina Rodriguez um, is constantly invited by life to find answers and create new paths. She has explored and gestated diverse paths from the stars, design, transpersonal psychology, education, motherhood, plants, and art. They all led her inwards, there where she cannot escape from the cry of her soul that asks her to embrace herself in her completeness, in her nudity, here and now. So welcome, Karina. Hola. 
Hola. Karina will be sharing in Spanish uh, in this conversation. So for folks um, that um, do not speak Spanish, you can uh, hear the English by going to clicking the interpretation button and joining the English channel. Um, welcome. Next, I'd like to invite Yeo and Yeo Beltran. Sergio Yeo Beltran has designed and participated in multiple intercultural group facilitation experiences. He is co-founder of the University of the Earth in Oaxaca and Tools for Good Living, AC. He currently supports and disseminates popular communication projects and educational alternatives around the world and practices the art of hosting meaningful conversations as an external consultant for companies, institutions, and nonprofits. He is a member of the Ecoversities Alliance, among other global networks. Welcome, Yeo. Thank you, Dan. I feel the need to say in Spanish the names of, uh, of the organizations you mentioned because it makes more sense. It's Universidad sure. de la Tierra in Oaxaca y Herramientas para el Buen Vivir. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Yoi. Er, Yeo. And finally, our third member of this conversation will be Wangui. And Wangui Wa Kamonji is a regeneration practitioner who researches and translates indigenous African knowledges into experiential processes, art and honey. Her work is motivated by the twin challenge of healing and generating new realities for the present and future informed by research using academic and indigenous methods, storytelling in written and oral forms, traditional African dance and movement practice, and facilitating spaces for critical consciousness and transformation. Wangui seeks to provide rooted embodied tools for Africans to heal the colonial traumas of past and present and recreate ways to live regeneratively with themselves, earth and ancestors again. For example, to decolonize and re-indigenize. Her work involves an ancestral connection, dance and choreography, improvisational movement, ancestral song, ritual design, indigenous food, oral storytelling, written poetry. Oh, maybe we'll get to hear her poem. Uh, story and essays, collective creativity, process work, and nervous system regulation with the Resilience Toolkit. Wangui is based in Ongata, Rongai, East Africa. So without further ado, I'll just open the space and, and the invitation is for you all just to have a conversation exploring what this means. What does returning to the mother coming home from school mean to you in your context? So, I pass it over to you three. Come on, unmute yourselves, ladies. Like, let's do this. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll start just to keep this awful but long tradition of patriarchy, and it wasn't my fault. I'm see. I'm. I'm noticing in the chat that people, uh, English speakers, um, have troubles figuring out how to navigate from one channel to other. So I'm just gonna speak in Spanish one poem and then go back to English, just for the sake of your practice. Welcome to our world non, of the non-English speakers. Okay, Joao, are you ready? Here we go. This is what I wrote down for, uh, with your exercise. Regresar a la madre, la mama pacha, para enraizarse profundamente y, y sanar los sinsentidos que adoctrina el cemento de la gran pirámide, que se desmorona con el blanco en la punta, queriendo sepultarnos en los escombros de su derrumbe. So I will start with that, um, with that poem because it really 
uh, call to me my own story of walking out of a formal uh, education. I was um, in the university writing my master thesis, being a good boy and hoping I will get a place in academia if I was very lucky in Flaxo, or if not, at least in the National University. And then uh, the Zapatista uh, rebellion started and it totally shifted my world and my mind. Because suddenly I discovered that those things that I was studying in books of the ancient past and the glorious uh, other side of the mestizaje, that is like how the Mexican national state try to put us all together in the same sack, was actually not that, but indigeneity was people that were still alive, living in nature, and with a whole set of wisdom that I wasn't unaware of until my early 20s. So I started getting in the activist relation, you know, like a guerrilla, we all want to know what that is in a country that uh, have been ruled for 90 years for the same party. So um, I not only discovered another way of social organization, but also another way to relate with the earth, with the world. And I learned that Pacha, that Pacha Mama means the mother earth that shelter us and nourish us all. So mine has been a long way of walking out of the systems as much as I can, but also walk into new ways of life that is not that it's another world is possible and we'll, we will achieve it in a developed progressive line, but it's already here and we just need to uh, allowed our mother to open our senses and learn from me. It. It's around you, even in the debrief of the falling cement concrete system that is trying to crush us down and we still flourish from, from, from the room. Okay, so more poetic than that couldn't, couldn't be. So Karina Wangu, please help me in here. Gracias, y me gustaría continuar. Eh, estaba intentando esta semana desde, bueno, desde que recibí la invitación, que fue hace mucho tiempo. Eh, ha sido un proceso de integración de, de todo lo que he estado viviendo estos últimos años, muchos años ya. En especial fui... Eh, invitada al regreso de la madre cuando nació mi hija, que ahora ya va a cumplir siete años. Y me puso más como ahí frente a frente con cómo estaba viviendo mi feminidad. Eh, entonces les contaba que estaba intentando escribir un poema y quizás algún rato lo comparta, pero me di cuenta que esa es la parte como romántica y bonita el fruto de todo eso, de este proceso que ha sido muy difícil. Regresar a la madre ha sido el proceso más difícil, más duro que he, he vivido. Ha sido salir del... Primero descubrirme, descubrirme en medio de... ¡Mita! No te grita, loco. No te pase usted. Ya. Yeah. Primero salir en medio de, 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 de esta sociedad que te dictamina cómo tienes que expresar tus emociones. Hay una manera de ser humano, hay una manera regulada. Mientras por dentro tenía todo un mundo complejo emocional que revoloteaba y necesitaba expresarse. Eh, fue también el regreso a la madre, ha sido el el abrazar mi intuición con todo el poder, porque estaba muy en la mente y este sistema te invita constantemente a estar solamente ahí, vivir en esta parte y no habitarte por completo. No abrazar tu lado femenino y tu lado masculino. 
querer demostrar solo haciendo, produciendo, llegando a objetivos y resultados. Y te defines por quién eres, por quién haces, qué haces, no por quién eres. Ha sido un, una invitación a parar y realmente aceptarme si es que me amo quien yo soy en el fondo sin estar haciendo tantas cosas. Ha sido abrazar mi lado masculino y femenino, abrazando también a mi padre y mi madre en mí, con todo lo que eso implica, lo lindo, lo feo, los traumas, los, las sensaciones de abandono, de desarraigo, de no pertenencia. También ha sido un proceso de abrazar mis sombras en el medio de, de darme cuenta que había cosas de la naturaleza que me daban miedo. Cuando fui invitada a una ceremonia de una planta medicinal llamada San Pedro, darme cuenta que, que le tenía miedo a algunas plantas y trabajar en esos miedos eh, me ha ayudado a profundizar en mis propias sombras darme cuenta que hay un montón de disfraces, había un montón de disfraces que he creado mi niña pequeña herida y ha creado estos monstruos para asustar a la gente antes de que se le acerquen y no ser herida. Entonces ha sido un proceso bastante doloroso, difícil y a la vez el proceso más hermoso que he podido vivir. Porque allí en medio de la oscuridad me he encontrado con un montón de seres que no veía antes. De hecho, que no puedo ver con mis ojos estos ojos. Que mi corazón ahora los puede sentir y los puede abrazar. Ha sido reencontrarme con mis hermanas plantas, con mis abuelitos árboles, con mis abuelas montañas, con mis ancestros estelares. Ha sido reencontrarme en una red gigante de seres humanos tan bellos como ustedes y de no sentirme sola, de sentir que estoy acompañada en este proceso, de abrazar la realidad de que escogí este tiempo para vivir pese a todo lo difícil que es estar en esta tierra ahorita con tantos problemas. Y de empezar de ser una persona altamente sensible cuestionadora de, de los sistemas desde que tengo uso de razón y no querer más que abrazar la vida con todo lo que es, con todo lo que eso implica. El regreso a la madre ha sido regresar a soñar con todos los mundos posibles, con todas las diversidades posibles encarnadas en cada una de sus experiencias y vivencias. Me nutren sus vidas. Y el regreso a la madre también ha sido abrazarme todas mis facetas de ser mujer, mi ciclicidad, mi intensidad. de querer no encasillarme en roles, ni estándares, ni en cómo ser buena mujer, buena mamá. De querer gestarme y parirme en cada ciclo. Y... Ha sido el darme cuenta de que la alimentación es una plegaria diaria de transmutar la energía de mis hermanas plantas que me nutren y de cómo yo con esa energía que me entregan hago lo mejor posible, soy. Voy a dejar ahí. Voy a seguir llorando si sigo compartiendo.
y quiero escucharles también a ustedes. That was so beautiful, Karina. Thank you. Um, I just want to take a moment to actually just mm, yeah, let it arrive. Also give folks a moment to switch channels. <laughs> um, Thank you for taking us to the heart, to the body. Um, one of the things I was thinking about with this returning to the mother from school, um, returning home to the mother, and I was thinking about home. Um, and more metaphorically, you know, I've been thinking about containers and what is it that hold, holds us um, as beings in this world, um, especially where we maybe have experienced home not as necessarily a safe place, like the physical home. Um, and I remember this one time um, I was sitting in process with uh, there's a mango tree outside my house. I was sitting in process of the mango tree and um, happened to break off like a piece of a branch and just really began to observe. And there was a tiny mango growing um, on that branch. And I noticed how the tiny, you know, circle of the mango, the fruit, was sitting in um, what had been the flower and that was sitting inside what had been the bud, and that was sitting inside the branch, and the branch was sitting, or before it broke, was connected to the trunk, and that trunk was then sitting very deeply rooted in the earth. Um, and I bring that image is to, to meditate on what kinds of containers do we reach for to nourish us, to see us, to witness us, to hold us. Um, what kinds of containers are we, you know, um, for me personally, I've been like being weaned out of, you know, the, the tiny containers that I had been trying to, um, to snatch from fulfillment, you know, and, and they disappoint. Um, academia, um, a, a cushy job, you know, the expected path of, you know, you do well in school and go and get a job at the UN or at a big, you know, nonprofit or something. Um, even family, like our born family is one of those containers and just really being shown how, you know, and I love that you talked about the shadows, really seeing how I was like trying to gather all of my nutrition from containers that were so small that couldn't, they couldn't, you know, even if they had been perfect, even if they had done the best um, that was possible for them to do, they wouldn't have been able to nourish the fullness of, of my life. And I've just been, my sight has been being redirected, 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 like, what is the larger container that actually holds all of us and has that potential? And how can I return to that? Um, something I was writing in the exercise was like, the practice is in the returning because I forget. Um, and I love that it is returning, you know, like you do it again and again and again and again. Um, for people who maybe have a practice of um, meditation, you know, sometimes it can feel like, oh, shoot, you know, I got distracted again. Um, my mind wandered off again. And I was speaking with a friend recently and I said, yeah, you know, actually the practice is more about the returning and not so much about the perfection of I managed to do this thing and did not get distracted even once. Um, and I think in a larger way for me, that is actually 
a medicine, it is a balm. <laughs> you know, sometimes we say things to other people and it ha it turns out that it was the medicine that we ourselves needed to hear. Um, so for me, uh, colonial schooling, the colonial nation state, the church, all of those are spaces of um, perfectionism. They, they were teaching me how to be um, perfectionist and gosh, I am. I have not yet redeemed all of myself from from those wounds of like trying to be as perfect as I could be. And when I dig deeper into it, I <clears throat> I connected to. It wasn't just perfection for perfection's sake. In my context, it was perfection in order to avoid punishment, in order to avoid the pain of punishment and. That pain is 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 very um, it's very visceral. It's very physical. It's very embodied. It's on the body. Um, whether that was you know corporal punishment in school, whether that was also corporal punishment in the home, whether that was you know the casserole systems, um, prisons, um, whether that was the ways in which women's bodies and queer people's bodies are disrespected and violated, um, and whether that was also just like the mental and emotional wounding um, that still affects our physical body, even if it's not like a stick on my body. Um, and so to to redeem myself from from that fear of punishment that has been over not just my own lifetime, but over generations, lifetimes um, injected into us. Um, and so what I had turned to was the perfection of, OK, if I do well in school, I'm not going to get beaten. Um, but OK, I'm like, where was I going with that? <laughs> um, yeah, so redeeming myself from that perfectionism and from that fear of punishment is also like embedded in this idea of re of returning um, and to know that like I can have a day when it was not easy, um, a day when all I wanted to do was stay in bed and eat sweet things and watch TV um, and learning how in that space of it, this is difficult to actually tell the truth, to tell the truth and say, this is difficult right now. And um, one of the invitations I received uh, in, in a practice was to admit incapacity, which is hugely difficult for me. And I think it's hugely difficult for anyone who's been trained in perfectionism to admit incapacity. Like, I actually can't do this. I actually don't know how. I'm struggling. This is difficult. I need help. Asking for help was also a big thing. Learning to ask for help. Um, what I was writing was the practices in the returning because I forget, because I remember the memory of pain and the promise of terror much louder often. And that mistrust that can grow, the mistrust that is um, passed down from systems that are built on pain from systems that are built on disintegration. Um, in, a, in a panel on Friday, I was remembering this quote from Leah Penniman where she says, you know, the, the land or the earth was the site of the crime. It was not the perpetrator of the crime. And I'll just say that again, the land or the earth was the site of the crime. It was not the perpetrator of the crime. And I'm just like allowing that to percolate, you know, because that mistrust, not just with the earth, not just with the land, but also with my ancestors, also with what I consider God, also with, you know, all of the beings that support my life. That mistrust was quite deeply engendered. Um, and I, f I found myself like, I, actually once i got past trying to perform you know i was trying to perform even with ancestors even with the land which can seem very laughable when i say it <laughs> however the training was deep um 
And so they actually liked, they just held me in that. They just held me in that until I was able to like fully turn, fully return to face them and face them with the with the bigness of what I felt was like, these, this isn't allowed. To be angry with your ancestors, to be angry with God, to be angry with the land and the earth. Wow. And that was radical. And that was kind of coming into, I can be a full person and actually my people want me to be a full person. That's the only way that they can engage with, that they can relate with me. Because otherwise, if I'm performing, that's a mask or that's a puppet. And so who, who is actually there to relate? Who is actually there to engage? Um, there isn't a person. Um, and I think maybe one last thing I would love to say is, Or maybe actually I'll just leave it that <laughs> I'll leave it there and just send it back to you all. Thank you. I just need to make a comment about what you said, my dear Wangui, because uh, you see much as you were talking about the mango tree and the complexity of the connection between life actually. We so and I was picturing how like the little mango was the the mother mothering the seed inside it and the branch was mothering the little mango and the trunk was mothering the little branch and then the roots and you could get to the whole universe if you follow the la the track <clears throat> and so in that complexity of life it's what they enable us in in colonial schooling as you say you know like we need to find solution, one verse, one truth, and anything out of there is invalid, you know? And then you said, like, my people wanted me as a full person. And I love that the fact that we still can see that difference between the individual that is modernly constructed and indoctrinated of a person, you know? Because we are not individuals, even they, they push us hard that idea. We are not single atoms isolated from the universe. We are persons that mean that we are the product of a knitting of a web of relations. Because you're, I'm never, I, well, I'm not even Jejo, no, as an individual, I will be Sergio Fernando Beltrana Ruti, and I have a big number that I could never remember that the national state have label me with but i am actually yeah because of that because i'm not that number i'm not that identity single unique because i am the cousin of someone the son of someone the brother the husband the father and the friend of a lot of siblings around the world you know and it's actually that network of relation that allowed us to see the, the the mother to see why the planet it is not the perpetrator and it's not only the battlefield but it's also the one that came behind is the broom that is that is also taking care of the disaster that was left behind no? there's this gandhi reflection about the broom that said to be in, so I'm going to paraphrase, of course, because I am not the kind of guy of quoting properly. That's what I don't write. I only speak, um, except when that make me do poetry. Um, that is being in service. They said that Gandhi used to say that being in service is as, is the aspiration of of being like the broom. It's always behind the door. No. Nobody cheers or acknowledges the broom. Nobody even remembers that the broom is there until it's needed. And then it comes and make the most important service that is needed at that moment. And then we drop it back behind the door and nobody uh, remember it. You know? I do feel that this planet is doing that service for us all the time. 
And we not only not acknowledging it, but we don't, we have been trained to not see that, no? And, but there, that is the, where hope nourished for me to recognize how like nature and life reborn in the cycles that Karina was telling. Karina's story remind me how we have several cycles of death and reborn. And it's not an, an incremental path. It's not that you are better than the, that your previous self. You're just a little wiser, a little more experienced. You have other things that you need for here and now. And uh, and yeah. So also uh, allowing yourself to be a person instead of an individual heal you from that checking the list of like i did it well no i i failed this i have to improve here like you're just another stage of yourself in a better world quería decir algo con respecto a lo de wangi estoy bien en el canal y eso para que puedan entender do speak uh, do English speakers understand understand me? Are you in the channel? Sí, ya, yeah, bacán. <ríe> Entonces, eh, sobre sobre este dolor cuando explicabas lo sentía realmente en mi propio cuerpo. Y también esto es otra otra de las invitaciones, no regresar a la madre es regresar a, al cuerpo y me encanta ahí tú haces movimiento de cuerpo hablaba de muchas terapias y cosas que haces con el cuerpo y, y cuán necesario se nos hace eh, no solamente en la sanación esta sanación que es hablada sino que podemos interiorizar hasta en nuestros huesos los traumas que se han quedado y, y ahí cuán importante es esta medicina que tenemos de la, de la tierra misma que nos provee. Entonces yo quería ahí hacer un, un poner unas, unas palabras que siento que son necesarias, digamos, o, o han sido necesarias en mi camino para regresar a la madre. Y que regresar a la madre no es solamente un, una invitación para pocos. Creo que ya es casi un, un deber para estos tiempos. Tiene que ver con la unidad, con ya quitarnos de esta idea de que estamos separados. Entonces es un regreso a la unidad, un regreso a lo simbólico, porque hay muchas cosas que queremos conceptualizar, eh, tratar de, de entender, de explicar, y hay cosas que no pueden ser así. O sea, son simbólicas, son sutiles, son energía, son espíritus. Eh, abrazar lo, lo sutil por eso también no solamente lo que podemos percibir eh, desde la cabeza sino también a través de nuestros sentidos a través de los sentidos extrasensoriales dejarnos nutrir de esas relaciones es un regreso también a algo tan cotidiano como los alimentos eh, un regreso a la interdependencia, a la comunidad, a necesariamente entretejernos, entretejernos para sanar, para caminar, para construir. Entonces quería mencionar estas palabras como necesarias para el tiempo que se nos viene y ya está aquí. Y como decía Yello, eh, estos otros mundos posibles que los venimos soñando ya están también y los seguimos nutriendo cada, cada día, pero necesitamos visibilizarlos. Necesitamos también trascender esta noción de, de culpa, de que hay unos culpables y otros no. La, la fe en la humanidad, eso necesitamos volver a crea, creer en lo divinos que somos de nuestra humanidad. Entonces esa es la invitación que les hago y, y que me hago permanentemente a mí. 
que fallo mucho, pero estoy anhelando eso. Sé que es necesario. Gracias. Well, we have a little over five more minutes for this uh, part of the conversation. Okay, Dan. <laughs> So I feel the space. Feel the... <laughs> Allowing transfers of channels. <laughs> um, um, I think I, I want to pull on maybe some other threads that were there from the beginning also. Um, I think an invitation that has that I have received, um, considering the context that I sit in, um, there's a lot of stereotypes and um, painful stories about the lands that I call home. And at some point, I received an invitation because I noticed that, like many other people who were moved, they, we were trying to kind of get get people to see us differently um, and kind of adjust everybody else's sight. And at some point, I received this invitation to actually, you know, pull my sight back to myself um, and in a larger way for you know my continent my lands for us to pull our sight from the rest of everything else and look at ourselves um, and i feel that coloniality one of the ways that it can work, especially when you've been wounded and you're carrying trauma, is you become vigilant. Um, you begin to have your sight trained only on the outside to see, you know, what is the outside up to? What is it trying to do? What's, what's the new terror that is being invented? Um, and there's, there's this pull, there's this stickiness to have your sight just constantly on the outside and with this invitation i was which which i want to share with you also is to bring that sight back to myself back to ourselves back to center um because i noticed that while i was you know all the way out there i was not centered um i was toppling over um all my energy was actually being drained and it was actually all my energy was actually in service to what I would have preferred for my energy to not be in service to um, even if I might have thought that it wasn't you know that I was actually doing the opposite but I in that invitation I, I that I'm still you know I'm still holding that invitation of returning to center, returning to center, returning to center. Um, and I use this image of uh, a forward slash, you know, like on a computer you have, on, your, on a keyboard you have this forward slash of like, you know, my sight is out there and um, based on what I see out there, then I adjust myself, I adjust what I'm doing. Um, and so my action is quite fundamentally tied to the thing that I'm vigilant to or vigilant about. And so in that invitation is to move from like that forward slash in whatever, <laughs> and like kind of straighten that back, you know, so that my sight, you know, is responsive, you know, and my center, my center is here and my action then is responsive to my center rather than to whatever it is I'm being vigilant about. And one of the ways I think of returning to center, you know, in that kind of nested hole, um, nested holes sitting, sitting in each other, like I was say, sharing with the mango, um, 
is returning to the heart. You know, we've talked about returning to the body, absolutely, because if you're not in the body, um, it's very difficult to be responsive because there's no one home to receive the signals, yeah? Um, but also returning to the heart and one of the things, you know, an exercise I would love to share with you that I did some years ago was like actually just drawing a map of my heart um, and in conversation with God and with my ancestors asking like, what are the different rooms in my heart that, you know, you're up to building? And maybe it's not rooms for you, maybe it's some other metaphor, but like, will you show me my heart? um and show me what my heart is like right now and that work of re-enlivening our heart so that we can live from our hearts again and so that we can actually be the people who can you know withstand all of the all of the things that are necessary to withstand in the work of in in now the more global work of of all of us returning home um I was in a process some years back and somebody, it was a, a very, very powerful, very moving, also very painful process of um, women sharing about experiences of sexual assault that they had been through. And someone gave this, this quote, which I carried with me from that session that, you know, since that time, you know, it's like, she said, it's like, as starlight left my body on that day and since that time i've been trying to call that starlight back into my body and i think that is really key for all of us you know we have experienced different kinds of assault some closer to the skin than others um, some closer in our lifetimes than others but that work of calling back that starlight into our bodies and also preparing the body, preparing the heart to again be a home that that starlight can find safety in, that that starlight can find witness and belonging in. Um, yeah, I think maybe that's that's all I'll share for now. I don't know if I <laughs> feel uh, so the space, but yeah. <laughs> You filled it. You you certainly filled it. Thank you. Uh, and let's just, let's just give a minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To... Yeah. I was going to say, like, maybe a minute of silence to let all that wash over. And I'll leave the speakers pinned as well, just so we can really have their words resonate with us. And just let's, yeah, give some time to let that settle. When you mentioned heart as a home, it made me feel in being compassion, compassionate with mm -hmm. ourselves, embracing mm -hmm. ourselves as we are now, mm -hmm. and stop fighting as someone mentioned in the chat. Stop, mm -hmm. stop fighting, first of all, with ourselves. Mm -hmm. One, one of the lovely things that I'm discovering walking back home is that I, I realize that my center is not in the middle of anything. My centers move with my passion, with my heart that is driving it. And making the map of my heart, it, I stop it because it became a very clear mycelium that go around the world. and. Uh, and I love this image of like my connection with your heart allows me to understand and show me who, what my heart is and who I am in that relation that might be a different piece of what will be if I am talking with someone else or learning about myself in another knot of the relation. Please take me out of the middle, Dan. Oh, you're... I'm shy. <laughs> oh, now this will be the flow now. Um, 
<laughs> so transitioning, it was beautiful to see the roots of the mango tree as the, the nested mother that's connecting the different trees and the different branches and to hear the, you know, Karina, Wangui, and Yeo to just build on each other and share how one story is the same as the other, how it impacts the other, how it's related or connected to the other. And I imagine within the wider group here, uh, there's many interconnected links and many avenues for deepening this exploration. Um, so we wanted to leave some space for others in the group to be able to share. So if you have a comment, if you have a question, if you want to share an impact of something that was shared, uh, I welcome you to either raise your hand, um, if you prefer to type, type it in the chat, and I'll do my best to uplift as many comments as I can. Um, I can't promise to get to all of them, um, but I will try. And uh, to begin, feel free, whoever has something moving through them, feel free just to unmute and speak into the group. And silence is okay. Silence is our friend. Go, oh, Eugenie. Yes, Eugenie. Eugenie. Yeah. I have a question for Wang Wei. Um, I'm deeply touched by what you just said. It really resonates in my story right now. And um, especially the two things you said about the fact that um, you went through uh, understanding that or what um, your perfectionism was about uh, guilt and, and fear, fearing the punishment and fearing the pain in the body. And that the body was impact whatever you suffered from were um, physically or emotionally or psychologically. And then you said that um, returning home was returning to the heart and, and then prepare your body for that. But how do you do when your body is in such a pain that you just can't? Mm. Um, I think you might there might be two different pieces there of pain. There can be the the like psychological, uh, emotional pain, and also potentially physical pain. Yeah. Um, and I maybe have less experience with truly physical pain so i might not speak you know 100 percent to that and welcome maybe somebody else who has that experience to share more um so how how my own body how i've prepared my own body to like welcome back that fullness of life has been a lot of body work um i think earlier we, we've mentioned like movement practices dance somatic work um working with food and herbs um but actually i think that the and um, you know doing nervous system work learning about the body learning about the beauty of the body and i'll use the word intelligence the the or, or just like the intelligent design of the body and the ways in which um even the pain is intelligent in the ways that it tries to protect us from more pain. Um, learning about the nervous system, w w when my body is doing such and such, what is actually happening? And all of these are, are, I will just call all of them like ways of building capacity, ways of actually expanding the ability of this body to hold more um, and to hold more of the reality of um, this actually happened. Because um, I think one of the things that is really painful is to even confront the truth of this actually happened. And to take it slow, slowness is medicine. Um, I sometimes fight it a lot, but I have just, I think I'm much more now welcoming 
the slowness as medicine, that today I might just have this much capacity and um, tomorrow perhaps because I'm in a community like this, I'm speaking with a friend or I'm you know, practicing with somebody, I might have much, a bit more capacity. Um, and the capacity is, is like capacity for different things. I, I think I'm recognizing capacity to hold grief um, because when you actually look at the truth of that pain, it's oh, pain, it's painful. Um, and to not fight my grief. And, the, and on the days when all I can do is actually fight my grief, to be honest about that as well, to say actually today, today I can't. Um, and, and when I say, you know, like I'm saying a lot of, and then I say, and then I say, and then I say, and to say, and to say, uh, who am I saying these things to? Um, because of the work, so this is another critical piece for me, doing ancestral work, ancestral lineage healing work, um, doing work to, to repair relationship with the earth and with um, the fruits of the earth, the plants, um, the more than human, all of the more than human, doing work to repair my relationship with God. Um, so when I'm saying, you know, and then to say, and then to say, and then to say, I'm actually admitting these things to um, often my more than human um, family. Uh, I'm saying, today I need help. Yeah, you're asking me to do joy today and it's difficult. And it is hard today. Um, or actually today it's difficult to do vulnerability with you. I it's it's difficult, please help me. Um and I don't think I could have done that a few years ago to actually ask for help because also like perfectionism and uh, a fear of punishment just puts a block. Um to relationship and then more and more um what the work with the more than human enables is then for me to have that capacity and that courage to then also turn to the human um, and trust a bit more the humans and take risks more with the human community and then also show up there and say today it's difficult actually today i'm feeling this and to be honest and not fear that there will be you know this backlash which is fear of punishment yeah um or fear of rejection or fear of abandonment um so this this is just some of what um is helping me the remembering the body and coming back to the body relearning the body having the courage to turn to the more than human and through that that is bringing me to the human Hmm. Thank you for that. Response. Thank you. It's ex extremely helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm hearing a deep humility that's enabling a deeper confidence and a deep confidence that's enabling a deeper humility. Um, I just want to uplift two comments from the chat. Fabrice had shared a poem. I don't know if you want to unmute and read it or if you just want to leave it where it is. But you're welcome no. to unmute and read it if you'd like. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's about capacity building and ancestral work because sometimes I feel that, you know, when we go through things, we think it's just our suffering, personal, whereas it is also transpersonal. And so in, in dealing with it, you're doing ancestral work on ancestral wounds. So the poem was, I'd written, returning to a queering parent, sibling and child, loving, fierce, cruel, and mild. So <laughs> maybe returning home is a healing process of very deep uh, collective and ancestral wounds. And it, it keeps us from idealizing this, reconnecting with the beautiful and the wonderful, uh, you know, entanglement of, of the world and, and, and acknowledging our need for capacity building for all that has been and is and how to build the strength to face that in a healing manner, you know, so that's it. 
Thank you, Fabrice, for sharing. And Karina, there was a question for you in the chat from Christina. Um, I don't know if you'd like to respond to that. Mm, okay, thank you. She said, I have a question for you. What is return to the mother and how is that experience manifesting in your life? Uh, I will say in English right now because I, I always like equity and <laughs> and as are many English speakers also. Uh, I think that, that for me is the the coming back from to the to our essential being because uh, this scholarized society has um, broken, separate, and uh, cover us, cover our identities, our our essence. Uh, is like the their encounter with my essential being, and there my essential being that it is connected to all the life and to all the traumas. And as Fabrice was saying, with these ancestral pains, with the with the madness and the sickness that it is in my body. So it is this difficult but necessary process of healing from the essence and you know, expanding and flourishing and connect, connected, con, yeah, connect with all the beings. Maybe this is in few words. <laughs> Thank you, Karina. Thank you. And there's a few comments, one from Bertis. We have all been betrayed about what is perfect. It is not how things should be, arriving at how they are at how I am is coming home. Thank you, Bertis, for, for that. And Sandy has a question, looking for a song. Sandy, would you like to unmute and share more about what you're looking for? Oh my goodness, thank for? you. But this is just so beautiful. Hmm. <laughs> it's hard when you don't have breath. So can everybody breathe with me, <laughs> please? I'm going to come back because I have, um, it's just. Mm. Mm. Can I do a little meditation that, a little, very little. That yes, please. Tell me. And it's like, uh, we feel our legs are roots that go deep deep in the heart of the earth where we can feel the heartbeat beating this heart that that is in all of us and then feel that energy coming through my legs and uh, through all my body and then with the top of my head connect to all the stellar ancestors to all the, the nourishment and the cycles and the energy that comes from above and also do the same as it is the heart of the universe and other the, the principal sun and also feel this energy coming from above and from beneath and it starts beating in, in my heart and it expands, expands as I am a, a tree in all this beautiful uh, ecosystem in whichever ecosystem you would like to be planted. And you are there embracing uh, with all the, the life that is there. 
in that I, I like to do this meditation with my kids when I, they are feeling nervous or, or with anxiety or fear to look themselves as, as trees planted and, and never alone. Thank you, Karina. Thank you. Thank you for the Palo Santos, Sandy. Thank you for the smoke. I also put my prayers there and the smoke help us so our words reach the place it needs to reach. Thank you for your vulnerability too. Oh, thank you. I think I can share now just very briefly. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is so healing. Um, I'm, I'm feeling the, the pain of the mothers and the children. I, I, I get the awesome, amazing opportunity to go and, and be in front of children and, and high school students and as an artist and as a, as a, a Métis and a mother and um, somebody who is finding their indigeneity. And I, and I, I talk about the ancestors, um, but recently I got to go into the Aboriginal Women's Centre to the daycare and the children, it's an urban centre and, and they don't have nature. So I wanted to bring nature to them. I have the drum with me and I sing, but I don't know the songs. So I was just wondering if there was an offering of a song or songs, even if it's just a beat to help the children. And, and thank you for that meditation. Meditations are beautiful. But I feel like the teachers as well as the, the, the children could, could hear that vibration and feel it. So if there was such an offering, I would be so grateful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for voicing that, Sandy. And thank you, as Yeo mentioned, for your vulnerability and, and yeah, showing your emotions and bringing your emotions into this with us. Uh, and if anybody has a song or an offering for Sandy, please drop it in the chat. Or if it's something that can be unmuted and saying, maybe we can practice it together. Um, but first, I want to bring in Zhao, who has his hand raised, and we only have time for one or two more shares before looping back to the speakers um, to close the session. So apologies due to time, but ciao. Big bow to Joao and to all the people that have been volunteering as translators and tech hosts and all of that. Woo. Thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you also, Jay, Jo, Karina. And everybody, Wangi, and everybody who is who is here, I'm very touched by this space. And uh, one thing that I want to share, like uh, here in San Cristobal, I have been doing, I have been part of a circle of people who have been hurt for collectives who were trying to change the world. So we are reflecting upon or on pens while we are trying to build a new world. So I got very touched by some things that you're, that, uh, you're all saying. And uh, one thing that I would like to share that touched me about what Wangi, Karina and Jeju talked, it's like, uh, I think one of the most radical acts that we can do at this moment is to also accept that we cannot always heal ourselves by ourselves. I really liked a lot this idea of Jeju that the center not necessarily is the center of our body because sometimes this returning to find our own light does require a, it's this uh, this light has been pushed down for so long that uh, could be overwhelming to try to interior interrate by ourselves. So we need uh, a little bit like Bhagavad Gita, no? When when they try to show all the all the conscience at once, and uh, it was just overwhelming. So build this 
very slowly ways to be able to create this collective body to be able to receive all those light that was neglected from us some to me one of the most powerful gestures that we can do to walk slow like <laughs> the computers also teach us you no know? so thank you for for putting that because i think uh sometimes we are so traumatized and hurt by the by the systems of violence that uh, it's also an, an easy way trying to to figuring out ourselves and uh, we need others so thank you for that mm, thank you joel Oi. and judith um just that we only have time for a relatively short comment before ending with a song that Saldo has often offered to share. Yeah, I, I didn't think I would have the, the moment, but thank you for the space. I just want to <clears throat> acknowledge there is this ache at the center of my body, in my heart, because when the offering of writing a poem about return to mother, the word mother, my mother, has no memory that is of loving and caring. So it's a, a space of hurt and breaking, of neglect and physical abuse. So if you recall, when I read my poem, it's about being smaller than grass because it was, it was at that time. And yet, I think I want to just offer that because I, as I listened to everyone, I understood even more deeply uh, in Tignat uh, Han's word, the way out is in. That to, to return to mother is to, to do mothering uh, for ourselves and to mother within, I think, it's what I understood. I, I didn't know how to engage with my body who remembered the stories of pain and trauma from my own mother. So I went up my head, you know, I did everything mentally to kind of survive and overcome the pain. It didn't work, I have to return home and be mother and care for me. I didn't know how to do that. But the process of coming, of leaning towards the trauma, the, the hurting, it became the process of healing. It became the very space that carried me to be more with my body and with my heart. Thank you. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much, Judith, for such a beautiful, vulnerable share. Lots of hearts, and I see people wiping their faces, and I have tears in my eyes as well. So thank you for yeah, sharing such a powerful um, experience. And uh, from here, yeah, I'd like to welcome Saulo, who has offered to guide us in a song. And this will be the, the closing of Hello. this beautiful session. Yeah. Hello, and then could I just, uh, there's always mo more time than life, so I don't care that much about the minute, but I'm going to take two <laughs> seconds to ask everyone in the room, if you will, to like, just put your energy, your good vibes, your prayers, if you know how to pray, if not, just your presence to Sophie Strand. Sorry. <laughs> To Sophie Strand that should be here and is here with us, but she couldn't speak with us because she's having some health issues. So just for her, her to feel our warm and love uh, as we hear the song of closing. Thank you, Yayo, for bringing that in. Everyone's going through it. Oh, see. 
Allá de la ilusión. 